For they sought to throw my people into the lion's den. For they sought to throw them in again, like in the days of Daniel of old. But the Lord said, just like in that day, I have sent mine angel there to shut the mouths of the lions. Yes, and the bear. For you have provoked this fight, you jackalous dogs. You have provoked this fight. You didn't care how you treated my people around the world. You thought surely the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not watching the babies and the children and the born-again ones in Ukraine. You thought for sure they wasn't. You didn't care if you killed them. You didn't care what you did. You didn't care when you ran your tongue down the mouth of a bat in a laboratory and you came with your forked tongue and spewed it out across the world. You didn't care. Well, I'll tell you something, Fauci. The two fang holes of a bat are in your tongue. And it is being seen now, not just by some. French kiss a bat in the middle of a lab. You're a fool when you invented the jab. Now a song is in the wind against you. And Obama will abandon you. The song is in the wind against you as Biden falls and Jill runs and laughs somewhere else. It's in the wind, the song. Hear the song? Can you hear it in the prophetic wind? It was made from the tunes of the moaning dead that cried as they died alone in their beds. You did that. Now you'll choke on your own vomit and poison. For the holes are in your tongue for what you have chosen. Was money that big to you? What good will it do you in the grave? For it will never buy back a life that cannot be saved. You can wave billions in my face as you fall to the ground. And still they will be blown about by the wind as you become food for jackals and hounds. Hear the moans and the cries of death as they cry from those who have gone on. For those who died, just like Abel, just like Abel. Oh, hear the moans and the cries from those who have died. Their blood soaked into the ground that made you food for jackals and hounds. Still you think you will win. Still you think it will all begin again. But nay, says the Lord, it will not. Not until I catch my church away. And in that day, you'll not be there. And the world will see. Though you may think a lot of things have went on. But the world will see. the integrity of the bear. For the time will come when all kinds of hidden things will come to light. But this is not the time the enemies you're pointing at 
are really not the ones that you need to be involved in the fight. It are those closest to you. They smile at you with their lips, but their hearts are far from you. They don't care. So they say, we will devour our own people and blame it on the bear. Oh, oh, oh the song in the wind. Oh, oh, oh the song in the wind moans out. Mm, yes, Lord. We say, oh, 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 oh the song in the wind. Oh, 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 the song in the wind moans out. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will give these prophetic words now that the Lord has said to give. Do you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that wind on the stream. It's real low in the background. Still coming through my amplifier. It's a wind. It's a sound of a low moaning wind. And there was a song the Lord just said, the song of the wind. He said, it's in the wind. That's the song of the wind. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it on the stream on my amplifier. Maybe you can bump that and you might pick it up on that particular aux. We can hear it. You can keep it where you can just barely hear it. I, that's real faint up here on the stage, but it's here. The whole team can hear it. Can all of you hear that? The Lord says they are going to swallow their own poison now. I saw Pelosi with terrible nerves. Fear is now, fear has now been un, uh, unleashed to its fullness on them. I heard Biden's wife will secretly throw him under the bus, so to speak. There is no escape now. When the Red Sea comes crashing down, it was a violent overthrow of Pharaoh and his army. This is the way it will be this time. The great seal of America, I saw it nailed to the prophetic, and it shall not be removed again. You failed, you failed, you failed. Hallelujah, and the great seal will not be removed from this nation. The prophets held it and nailed it where it cannot be removed. It's amazing, the Lord said, and it shall not be removed again. You failed, you failed, you failed. And the great sea, seal America, of America will not be removed from this nation. The prophets held it and nailed it where it cannot be removed. How far will you go? How far will you go? Not much farther. Look up, America, for your redemption from this crap, this waste. They have made you crawl through. Look up. Your redemption draweth nigh from this waste that they have made you crawl through. Let me read it just right. This is actually what I heard. Look up, America, 
for your, your redemption from this crap, this waste that they made you crawl through, that they have made you crawl through. Look up, you that made America crawl through it, for you are caught. Teetotaling Christians that choose to ignore the war, you stay in your tea room and you say it will be all right while others, your brothers and sisters, are in the middle of the war. Some dying, others wounded. But they are fighting and dying so you can drink your tea. I'm speaking to not only those who seek to be friendly with compromise, but also to the word of faith. Churches who say, the word, but will not put in action, any action to their faith. You are letting others be the feet and the action to your confessions of faith. Shame on you. For you taught them to fight. Yet when the time came to fight, you refused to pick up the sword. Repent and turn and fight. The prophets you criticize have become the action to your faith that you refuse to be. I have called for the sword of the Spirit, the word of faith, and the prophetic to come together in the last days. Yet some of you are pulling away from the prophets because you are falling into a place like the denominations that are scared they are going to lose. You're scared you're going to lose your place. But embrace the action, and I will guarantee you, you will never lose your place in history. You are not a camp, but a stream. All of the church revelations are streams meant to flow together, not to camp and stay. So rise up, pick up the sword and fight, for your victory, says the Lord, is now at hand. Do it, says the Lord. Do it, America, and the world will be glad. Hallelujah. And that was the word of the Lord for today he gave me. And all the songs that he wrote today, all the music that he wrote today was not planned. We walked out on stage and I asked the team, do we remember, do you remember that song? Uh, he's the one who parted the sea. There's no one like our God. And we just started putting it together real quick to remember it, and then everything you heard came out of that. And the wind still blows up here on the stage. It has never stopped. So those prophetic words was, was warning, protection, correction, direction to churches. We must not lose focus of the sword of the spirit for this is our weapon the word and the prophetic we must not lose that focus and I'm going to tell you something else too I believe I believe that the enemies you see today soon you will see them again no more forever some of those that we have focused on, people have focused on to fight for too long. They're pointing at a man. They're pointing at a man. The prince of Persia has fallen. He has fallen. He fell this week. And now he has fallen over nations. And the people that called themselves God, like in Ezekiel 28, who thought he was a God, but God said, you're a man. Those people are about to find out they're men. And there is no getting up this time. When you fall, you fall. You were given every chance. And I'm going to tell you something. That includes both parties. You better shake yourself. You better get off your big fat rear ends and shake yourself. You who claim to be the, the guardians of conservatism.
You who claim to uphold Christian values and yet you sit around at night and drink till you're drunk. You sit around at night and you, you commit adultery with, with everything around you. You start living this life of politics while you stand up and belch in uh, front of my people and tell my people how much you love them and how much you are born again and, and you stand for the conservative values of the Almighty. You better shake yourself. Because you're going down with them. You're going down with them. Even now as you see the signs of the drying pools. Even now as that's drying. It's about to cross now. And everything is going to crash down in a violent way. In a violent way. I call for Netanyahu. Walk back in office. Go back in office now. Go on back. You have a clear path. Go back. For the world needs you. Your God needs you right now. I call for Trump. If you're going to move, move. Move now. Because it's nothing standing in your way. And you are anointed to be that leader. You're still the president. He would say, oh, you're talking too rough. Brother Robin, you're talking too rough. You're talking, no, no, I'm not. But there comes a time. Now is the time. Rise up. This is the right time. For men will fall and men will rise. And this is the time. You don't understand something. You cannot let, and I'm talking to everyone that's powers that be. And I say this and and what they call, you know, reverence and trembling. But you cannot, all of you that are standing, you cannot let 2020 go. You cannot let it go. You cannot let it go because past 2024, they will shut the door. But the anointing is still on our rightful leader right now. Our rightful president is still the one. He's still the president. God has never anointed a jackal dog to lead a nation. A jackal was a god in Egypt. And it was amazing in 2010. Right, I think right before, uh, right after Obama lost the seal off the front of his podium. They sailed uh, Anubis, the jackal, the god of Egypt, down a barge in New York, past the Statue of Liberty. And then he lost his seal. He was prophesying that's what was coming. God never anointed a jackal to be president. Never. He never did that. Can you not tell, honest now, I mean, really, can you not tell that the way these people act, they couldn't run a Boy Scout group? I wouldn't let them near my boys. If I had boys like, I, would, I, got, I wouldn't let them near my, my son. Mine's grown, but I wouldn't have let them near him. They stumble around. They can't even run a bake sale. And stand there. Stand there and pretend to lead the free world while the free world mocks you. You're, a, you're, you're the court jester of the world. So it's time. It's time. I call Netanyahu. I send a prophetic word. Go back in office to President Trump. Go back in office. It's time. If you're going to walk back in, then all these leaders that they have exiled, walk back in on the prophetic word. See, this is, this is not going to come the way people think. You know, people think, oh, you're just inciting people to, you know, to do this, to do that. Let me tell you something. 
when Moses got to the Red Sea, and he stood there at the Red Sea, and he looked, and here comes Pharaoh's army charging down upon him. And he looked. Did you know Moses got rebuked by God? The Lord told him, said, why are you crying to me? Why are you crying to me? He said, stretch out your rod and divide the sea and tell the people to go forward and stretch out your rod and divide it. Tell them to go forward. Did you know the children of Israel had a choice at that moment? At the Red Sea, a lot of people don't know this, they were armed to the teeth. Because when the scripture says they came out of Egypt, it said they came out harnessed. It means they, were, they had taken their weapons, they were suited in armor. I mean, they had weapons to fight. They had a choice. They could turn and fight in the physical or they could walk the prophetic road of destiny and go all the way across and never lose a man. And Moses was crying to the Lord, I believe, between the decision of what to do. And that's why the Lord said to him, Moses, why are you crying to me? He said, tell the children to go forward. That's what I've already told you. Don't stop and start second-guessing yourself. So this is the time. You're going to walk back in office on the prophetic road. Not a physical fight. Just walk back in. The Lord will make a way. So I'm here today, and I don't know if I'm speaking in enough code, if they've already shut me off or whatever right now. It's amazing to me. I'm still up. But I'll tell you this. And nobody, nobody, you don't, don't get me wrong. Nobody loves this president more than I do. I'm talking about the real president. You understand the president I'm talking about, right? There are only one. I'm not, there's a president, there's a jackal. I, I'm not in, I don't love jackals. You know, I, I'm not required to do that. I love, as the president, I love the president. And nobody respects him more. And I'm telling you, Stand up and start walking towards your chair. The Lord is with you. Netanyahu, the Lord is with you. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. I've, I've said too much probably today. We, we, are, we are standing and everything we are about to, you're, you're, you're seeing, I'm, I'm trying to prepare some things in the prophetic, like prophetic timelines, a prophetic movement I want to share soon. And I'm trying to put it all together right now so that we can see exactly where we are. Because when the prophetic and, and prophecy and the prophetic starts and has a movement and it starts moving forward like that and it starts traveling, then then there is definite signs and road signs as it goes. And it is heading toward a finished end. The end that was declared from the beginning. That's where the road's headed. And DJ Trump is the Presidente of the United States of America. And jackal is not. Never has been, never will be. I don't care how many puppet masters are pulling strings, how many people are hid in basements. I don't care how many people are, are running, trying to revive all kinds of regimes. They still don't bury the truth. And you have failed. You have failed. You have failed. And now you'll be unraveled. Hallelujah. 
the unraveling has begun. Amen. Well, praise God. It's been a good 11th hour today. It's been a good 11th hour today, I said. And I don't know if people around the world know, but it's been a good 11th hour today. Oh, could they? We didn't plan any of that. It just started happening. And uh, I don't know if I, don't, if I cut it all off, I'm sure to quit, but I just thought I'd just leave it blowing for the remainder of the service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So wherever you are around the world, uh, chat in right now and say the winds, tell me, is the winds blowing here too? If you can hear it, it's blowing where you are too. It's coming through the air. It's a song in the wind. A song in the wind telling jackals they're at an end. It's a song in the wind of victory for God's people. A win, win, win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A sound of going, Robin said. Yes, in the mulberries. The sound of going. It means to get up and go. Start moving. Oh, just go traveling rejoicing. The Lord has set angels to in an ambushments against the enemies. And as soon as God's people start walking toward the cliff of Ziz, worshiping and praising God with the song in the wind, there's ambushments down there against the enemy. And he will cause them all to fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's fix 2020. Let's just fix it. You know, the Lord gave me a prophetic word one time. He said, I'll give you two trumps. And if you ask me, he said, I forget how exactly he worded that. He said, and maybe three. I'll never forget that. This was way back before any of this really got this far. I forget how far. It might have been talked about then, and, and it was going on. But he said, I'll give you two and maybe three if you believe me for it. So something's shaping up right now. You know, Kim Clement said, uh, Kim Clement said that there would be a time of two presidents. People thought that was the wildest thing. <laughs> now look what the prophet said. And so... And I heard the Lord say, two presidents, two inaugurations. And at the same time, did you know that when Biden had that phony inaugural thing going on, did you know that when they did that, that Trump was still the president when they did that, according to the time? It's amazing, isn't it? And he's still the president. Amen. That's, that's because no one could overshadow him and no one can bury the truth. It will resurrect. I said the truth will resurrect. Hallelujah. Get excited, you churches. Get some fire back in you again. If you show our rightful president that you love him and support him, he, he'll stand up. All of a sudden, he'll stand up and start moving toward, toward the rightful place where you want him to be. He's looking for every one of God's people to stand up and say, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Man. I'll tell you, I don't have my big staff with me again, but we forgot to start beating the staff on the ground and calling him back. We call you back, President Trump. We call you back in Jesus' name. We call you back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today, and uh, it was our privilege to get to be with you, my privilege to get to be with you today. Can you see my badge right here on this? Sword, it says, resist tyranny. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what that says. You know, when Nazis put that kind of yellow star on Jewish people back when Hitler was, was doing what he did. So we put resist tyranny. And somebody, one of our partners sent me that. And I like it. That's why I put it right out front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to resist. We are the resistance. Amen. Well, we got praise reports. Come on and let's give some of them, Roxanne. Some really, 
magnanimous. Yes. Is that a word? Magnanimous <laughs> praise report. I do believe it is. Okay, great. <laughs> we're we're going to call it one anyways. All right. <laughs> It says, on the 11th hour, you gave a word to Mary about her daughter or daughters and that God would intervene uh, in their life. And so she said, I've been praying for my daughter for a while now. She was homeless, living paycheck to paycheck in a motel with her two dogs. She ran out of motel money, lived in a tent for a weekend, but due to Washington weather, was going to have to live in her car. So God gave the message through you about Mary. So she said, today, which was on April 7th, I received a call that my daughter has a place to stay with her sister, rent free for a month or so in order to put enough money together to get to an apartment. So the Lord provided her a home. Mary. Yes, yes, Mary. Hallelujah. She said, I'm trusting God for her now, but he gave Mary a place to live, (laughs) brought her out of homelessness. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Another one says, tonight I was listening to the 11th hour. This was probably across the world. Said it was the segment in which you were singing, I will lift my hands, there's only one God. And I lifted both of my hands straight up high in praise. It was a miracle. I have had bursitis in my left shoulder for years and have not been able to lift it. I fell a month ago and was diagnosed with a tear in my rotator cuff, and it made the lifting worse. So she said, I'm 5'7 and couldn't reach the second kitchen self, uh, shelf. She said, now I can lift both arms with no pain and no restriction. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hallelujah. Yes. This was, and it was amazing. It said, while you were praying, and I do believe this is a partner that's that's not a, it's it's in a, a an Asian country, I do believe. It said, while you were praying on today's 11th hour, you mentioned that um, when you look into the faces, they will see your face talking about the Lord. That day I received the Holy Spirit fire and tongues while watching you. And my son came to me because I was speaking in tongues and I touched him. And then he saw Jesus, fell to his knees and said, I believe you, Mom. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. We now, have... That's supernatural. Yes. Is it? All of that supernatural yes. you said, but. My goodness, that's an actual spirit world broke through into yes, the natural. Yes, that's right. Man. Another one said, after watching uh, yesterday's 11th hour, this was last week, I tithed $8 in obedience to the Lord. This morning I received in my bank account $850 from out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Man, these are just some praise reports. When did these come in? Are these from just this week, I guess? From the last two weeks, man, there's just, man, maybe sometime we ought to just do a big segment on just partners and read their, and encourage our partners. Yeah, there is nobody like our partners. Nobody like the 11th hour partners. The 11th hour partners, man, that's why no matter how tired I am, no matter what, I pray over our partners. I'm praying over our partners. Our partners... I, I'm, I am standing with you for you, and we have already won this thing. We just have to stand. You know, Robin gave a prophetic word not long ago that said, though your legs be shaky, stand. When it's all over, you'll be glad you did. Hallelujah. Something to that effect. And that's, that's exactly what it comes down to. Though everything screams at you, don't, don't, don't. You, it's not, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make You stand. And you stand on the word, the the written word, put it in your heart, speak it out of your mouth, and you stand. And if you believe the prophets, you'll prosper. And so just stand. You'll be glad you did. Even though your legs are shaky, stand anyway. Amen. You know, I'll tell you, it wasn't long ago, Robin called up on the phone and and she, she said to, or sent me a text and said, You know, the scripture in Ecclesiastes 10, where it says, uh, curse not the king or the rich in your bedchamber, for a bird of the air will carry the voice, and he that hath wings will go tell the matter. And then suddenly this battle turned out. It was this battle she was referring to when Elon Musk came out and and started buying the bird that was going to go tell the matter of everything that had been silenced. And I, th- I think we're in the middle of a big prophetic cycle right now. So we're about to see what's going to happen all, all across the board. New things will rise, old things will fall. Some things will just become not important at all. Hallelujah. Remember that. But I do remember a word the Lord gave me. It said, tell the tech giants. 
All the money you've spent to destroy the unborn. All that that you've spent to do that. He said, I'm going to use that money to knit your shrouds. And the Lord said this, save two coins for your eyes. Because that's all you'll have left when it's over. Two coins to close your eyes. And now look at what's happening. They're threatened for the first time ever. Facebook has already fell once, lost billions of dollars, and pronounced themselves dead. Changed their name when they fell and said, okay, now we're going to be called Meta. Dead. All right. Well, here we go. 11th hour. Today, another 11th hour has come. So I want to give you opportunity to give. Today, if you want to give into this ministry, into the 11th hour, you don't have to. But if you'd like to, we want to sure open the door and give you opportunity to, uh, that you can sow into good ground. And when you do, remember, call to be a partaker of the grace that's on this ministry. The grace that's on this ministry. Paul said his partners were now partakers of his grace. So call to be a partaker of the grace on this ministry. If you're a partner, then the anointing that operates here to win battles, the anointing that things are never as bad as they seem, the anointing to prosper, the anointing to see in the future, the anointing to teach the word, the anointing to, to do everything that you see happening on the ministry is available to you in your life, in your home, in your family because you are a partner with this ministry. You're a partaker of this grace. So today, if you'd like to give, we're going to put up our, our offering scripture first. If it's an offering you're giving, then it's Luke 6 and 38. The king made this declaration. He said this. It's written in red, actually. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. So let's go ahead and pray it now, and I'll lead you in the prayer, and you say it with me, would you? Say, as I give, it shall be, not might be, shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto my bosom. For with this same measure that I'm giving, it'll be measured to me again. I believe it. I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Now just praise God that it's done. Come on and praise Him. Lord, we thank You that it's done. We thank You that it is so and it is done. Hallelujah. Now, if you're a tither, you know, uh, yeah, if you're a tither, there's certain promises to the tither that's just not anywhere else. And it was the tithe. It's, it's the only time that uh, other than the in Noah's day when the windows of heaven opened and in Elisha's day when the windows of heaven opened and flooded the gates of Samaria with such an abundance of food. And those windows, every time those windows open, salvation comes in, deliverance comes Every time they're open. And so he says this in Malachi 3. He said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Imagine having those windows continually opened. All the time. All the time. I think that's, you know, that's why people... Uh, and that's the only reason, really, I guess, you people want to give reoccurringly, constantly. You keep those windows open, and that's for the tither. Now, that's the tither. Hallelujah. So, say it out loud. As I bring all my tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. I prove you now, Lord, open me the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and rebuke the devourer for my sake, that he not destroy the fruits of my ground, neither shall my vine cast forth its fruit before its time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call me blessed 
For I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Well, see, and so now you have a continual thing. You know, I never thought about that, but people, you know, people give reoccurringly in the ministry. They'll call and, and they'll set it up to where it's just an ongoing thing. That keeps, that would keep those windows open if it's tithe. If it's tithe, it would, you know. And so, and then prosperity is offerings and things like that. So we need to fight on every front. We need to fight uh, spiritually, and you always do your fighting with the Word. So we need to fight on the spiritual. We need to fight physical, and this gives us a way to fight in the financial realm too. You know, God don't want wicked people owning all these corporations. He wants His people to own them. And I think the people He wants to own them are you. And I believe that some of you have ideas for businesses that, um, you know, we was talking about Elon Musk. I saw just a little snippet of something on him, and he said, he said, I thought I was crazy. I thought I was insane when I was little, little boy. He said, I didn't know any other child anywhere that their mind ran and worked all the time, constantly with ideas, 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 but his did. And he just started jumping out there. So some of you have ideas that God has already blessed. That's why he's calling you to do them. Just jump on out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, if you're just obedient, it'll be more than enough. Hallelujah. Whatever you give is more than enough. Yeah, uh, just be obedient because obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Well, it's been a good 11th hour, and it's been good to be with you today. I don't want to leave the program today on this episode without giving someone opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord. He's the greatest thing that you will ever meet, ever, any person you could ever know. He is Lord. He is King. He is God. He has defeated death, hell, the grave. He has made a way for you and I to live above the muck and mire of, this, of everything the enemy tries to throw at us in this world. And you are more than the enemy tells you you are. You are a success. You're not the sick trying to get well. You are the healed and Satan's trying to steal your health. You're not the poor trying to get rich. You are the rich and he's trying to steal your prosperity from you. You are the victory going somewhere to be victorious. And he's trying to convince you that you're a failure. But you're not. You're an overcomer. If you've overcome one thing today that the enemy threw at you, that makes you an overcomer today. That makes you an overcomer today. Hallelujah. So start saying it. I'm an overcomer. Bless God, I'm an overcomer. Now, yeah, man, there's so much running through my thinking. You want to, to make Jesus the Lord of your life. That's step one. Just Paul said this, if you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. You confess with your mouth that he is your Lord, you'll be saved. So right now, just say that and believe that. Say, Lord God, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord, that he is my Lord and my King, my Savior. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Take my life and do something with it. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Now, after you've done that, you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So how do I do that? Well, he lives in you now. So what you want to do is you want him to come up on you. Just come up on you. And anoint you that way. The way he came on Jesus at the Jordan. So you just say this, Lord Jesus, baptize me in the mighty Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say. Now just thank him for it. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for baptizing me 
in the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. And then just let those other sounds come up out of your being, out of your spirit. And that's the Holy Ghost telling you what to say. And just let those sounds out. And just begin to let it flow. That's the language that God and Adam spoke to one another in. The language of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Well, it's been good to be with you today. And on behalf of the 11th hour team and myself, we love you. And I want you to know you are loved and you're never a day without prayer. I can promise you that. You're never a day without prayer. Hallelujah. And until next time we gather together around God's word on the 11th hour, I want you to remember, never forget that God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom.